All right, so for the first part of this lab, we're going to take a small piece of wax. We're going to put it over the Bunsen burner for a few minutes. We're going to make observations about what happens. So right now, before we do that, I'd like you to take a look at this piece of wax and just write down some observations of what it looks like, and then we're going to heat it, and we're going to see how that's going to change. All right, so we've lit our Bunsen burner. We're going to heat this piece of wax for a few minutes, and we're going to see what happens during that change. So here we go. All right, so we have heated our wax and our Bunsen burner, and we can now take a look and see what it looks like after burning. So again, make some observations about what has changed about the material. Has it changed color? Has it changed its physical state? Is it now a liquid or a solid or a gas? And write that down on your observation sheet in your lab handout. All right, so in this part of the lab, we're going to light our candle, and we're just going to let it burn for a few minutes. And uh, we're going to make note of, again, what it looks like before our burning. And then after a few minutes, we'll take a look at it again and see how it has changed. So we're going to light our candle here again using a wood splint. Let's get this candle going. And then we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. All right, so it has been about seven or eight minutes. And this is now our candle after it's been burning. So we can make some observations now. And uh, yeah, we can see that quite a lot of it has disappeared or is gone. Um, the question is, is, was this a physical change or a chemical change? Do we think that the wax is now floating around in the air somewhere as a gas, or has it turned into something else, and is it different materials? All right, so this portion of the lab, we're going to take a piece of paper, and we've ripped it up into a bunch of small pieces, so again, we'll make some observations about what this paper looks like before we do any burning or anything. So again, make note of what it looks like, things like that. Make sure my hand's out of the way so you can actually see it. And then we're going to light this on fire and see what it looks like after. So let's get our Bunsen burner going here. Okay, so we're gonna light our paper on fire. And again, we will let it burn and then we will take a look at it when it's done and make any observations about what it looks like afterwards. All right, so our paper is done burning, um, and we're going to just take a look at what it looks like now. Now, all, not all of it has burned, however, quite a bit of it has. So if we can see inside there, we should be able to see um, what the paper looks like now. And again, we can write down some observations about what it looks like after the burning is done, and uh, if we think that that material inside there is still paper or not. So again, we can kind of see inside that it's kind of gray and a little bit more brittle looking. All right, so for this portion, we are going to be using some sodium chloride. So before we do anything, we're going to take a look at what the sodium chloride looks like. You see that it's a white solid. Uh, it's kind of powdered. We're going to put that into a test tube here, and we're going to shake it up, and we're going to see what happens. So let's add some of this in. We'll then shake this with our thumb so you can see the sodium chloride in the bottom of the test tube there. So we'll just do some shaking here for a little bit. Okay, and now afterwards, we can look and see, do we see that sodium chloride anymore, or is it now gone? And we can again ask ourselves um, what has occurred here, whether this is a physical change or a chemical change. All right, so we have now our sodium chloride and it has been dissolved in water, and we're now going to add 10 drops of this silver nitrate solution. So again, I'd like you to observe and write down what occurs when these drops hit. So we're going to add 10. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we've added 10 drops. And uh, we can see here that 
something white seems to have formed on the surface of our test tube when the sodium chloride or the silver nitrate hit the sodium chloride solution. So again, make note of this and write that down in your observations and uh, we'll answer the questions later on on whether or not we think this is a physical or chemical change. All right, so we've got a piece of magnesium ribbon here. We can see that it's kind of a silvery looking metal. Um, so again, we can write, make some observations about this. We're gonna cut this into small pieces. We're gonna put this in an evaporating dish. All right, so we have our test tube here with our magnesium ribbon cut into small pieces. We're gonna add some drops of hydrochloric acid and we're gonna make note of what happens. So here we go. So we see that the magnesium ribbon is reacting very vigorously with the hydrochloric acid and the test tube is becoming quite hot so I'm going to place it down on the table. There's all kinds of bubbling that is occurring and we see tendrils of smoke or some kind of gas escaping from the test tube as well. So again we can make note is this a physical change or a chemical change based on the observations here that we are seeing. All right, so we have placed one microspatula of copper sulfate powder into a test tube. So we're gonna make some observations about this powder before we do anything to it. You can see it's kind of a nice blue color, kind of a light blue, uh, moves around pretty easily, All right? So then we're gonna heat it on a Bunsen burner and take a look and see what happens when it is done. All right, so you've got our Bunsen burner going. Let's heat up our copper two sulfate for a few minutes here and see what happens. So we notice again that it was a blue color to begin with, but as it starts to heat, we can see that that color is starting to go away. And you can see that's kind of a grayish color now as it's still heating. Now again, there's still some blue color there. I also see some smoke coming out of the tip of the uh, test tube. It kind of looks like maybe steam. It looks like there's a lot of water coming out from inside the test tube there. Might be hard to see, but there's a lot of condensation. So you're gonna continue to heat for a few minutes until this has become either a dark brown or kind of a black color. So we'll continue heating. Again, we can really see that that color has changed. It was very, very blue to begin with, but now it's turning a, again, a dark gray or a brown color. There's quite a bit of smoke or steam or something, again, coming out of the tip of the test tube. Again, it looks like a lot of condensation or water vapor almost. Let's keep he heating here for a few more minutes. All right, so we can see now that our Copper two sulfate powder is no longer blue anymore. It's a kind of a grayish color on the bottom. It's even kind of a dark brown color. So we can ask ourselves, is this a physical change or a chemical change? We're gonna let this cool down. And then once it's cooled down, we're gonna add some water back to it and see what happens. All right, so our copper sulfate has cooled down enough Again, it's kind of this gray color after we heated it. So now we're gonna put some drops of water in here and see if we notice any kind of change happen. So here we go. All right, so right away, I kind of noticed that there is some blue color coming back after adding the water back in. So that's interesting. Again, it was a gray color before and now with water added to it, it seems to be turning blue again. And so now we see that vibrant blue color that the powder was before we heated it. 
So that's interesting. So again, was the heating of this powder a physical change or chemical change? And now that we've put water back into it and that blue color has come back, was that a physical change or a chemical change? So we're going to answer those questions in the post lab. All right, so this portion of the lab, we've taken some iron powder and we've added some sulfur powder to it. So you can see that in this test tube, you have the iron, which is the gray stuff, and the sulfur powder, which is the yellow stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix these together real quick using a little um, glass stir rod. So let's grab a glass stir rod here. So we're gonna mix these two using a glass stir rod. We'll just kind of try to get these to combine or mix as best as, that we, as best as we can. Okay, so we can mix these together. And we're going to take a magnet and we're going to run it along this test tube with the sulfur and iron mixed together. And we're going to see if we see any kind of change occur. And then we're going to heat these two in a test tube and we're going to see if we can see any kind of change occur. All right, so we've mixed these together pretty good and now we're going to run a magnet and see if we see any kind of change happen. So here we go, let's grab this magnet. Okay, so we can see that if we take a magnet and run it along this test tube, that we can pull the iron filings out of this mixture and a lot of the sulfur powder remains below. So again, you can see that I can run my magnet and pull a lot of this iron powder up the side of the test tube here. Okay, maybe I can do it better from this side for the camera to be able to see. There we go. Again, we can see that this iron filings are moving up and down the test tube, but the uh, sulfur powder, a lot of it is staying in the bottom. So. All right, cool. So now we're going to heat this and we're going to see what happens when we heat it. All right, so here's our test tube of iron powder and sulfur powder. We're going to heat this using our Brunson burner. And again, we're going to make observations about the changes we see and afterwards, whether it was a physical or a chemical change. All right, so here we go. Let's heat it up. All right, so I see some color change already happening at the bottom of the test tube. Looks like it's turning kind of black. That yellow color seems to be disappearing. Ooh, I definitely see some light being given off and it's glowing pretty, uh, pretty brightly there. It's off the flame now, you can see it's still glowing. I also see a little bit of yellow gas of some kind, maybe being expelled from the outside mouth of the test tube. Can we still see that it's glowing even when I pull it off of the flame? And now that glowing seems to be going away and it's not glowing so much anymore. It might be glowing still from it being hot, but it really, really got bright there when the reaction took place. So we'll heat it for a little bit longer just to make sure everything is fully reacted. Yeah, that looks about good for now. So let's we're going to turn the heat off and take a look. So we can see now that this material is black and uh, not powdered really anymore. It's pretty solid. So it kind of looks like it's caked in there. There is some uh, smoke kind of coming out of the mouth of the test tube there or some kind of gas of some kind. So uh, we definitely see a color change. It's not yellow anymore. Um, there was a lot of heat that was given off as well, so we also saw light. All right, so we're going to make those observations down on our sheet, and then in the post lab, we will take a look at whether we think this was a chemical change or a physical change.